Machines of the strangest kind, homemade by the students, fight it out one-on-one -on -one to try to complete a particular task. The audience has a lot of fun, and the student engineers who build the machines find out not only what it's like to come up with an idea, but then how to follow it through design, construction, testing, and final use. We were here a couple of years ago to film the contest for the first episode of Discover the World of Science, and the segment turned out to be one of the most popular ever. Here's another chance to see it. For six weeks before the final competition, 160 students on the MIT campus spend their days and nights preparing their machines for battle. What are they fighting for? Professor Woody Flowers can tell us. The task is really to teach the students about engineering design. This year, we're having them do that by designing, building, and seeing evaluated a device which will start within this boundary, grab this peg, and try to put it into that square hole. To make things more interesting, however, from the other end of the pegboard will be another device trying to put its peg into the same square hole. To uh, give the students an equal chance, we give each one of them a kit of materials. The students call it a bag of junk, but we spent quite a bit of time thinking about what's in the kit. Quite a few different kinds of things in the kit. There are two DC motors, which are very effective power supplies. There are pieces of rubber, which would be very good for our rolling friction if the students made a, a wheel device. Several constant force springs in the kit, which the students can cock so that the springs will release the energy as the contest starts and power their devices. The available parts are limited. The possible designs are not. There are as many different machines as there are students, but there are only a few strategies to choose from. The simple swinging arm approach. Grab the peg and make for the hole as fast as possible. That relies on sheer speed to win. John Tenney's machine is a defensive type, using a barrier to protect the hole from his opponent. Well, here it goes. But he needs speed as well, and his barrier has a long way to go, over the top. And that's it. And it's, uh, won the competition, I hope. Three, two, one. Kevin Smith's barrier only has to move straight out, so it's extremely fast. And there's a third strategy, pure offense. A projectile knocks out the opponent, and then you can take your time getting to the hole. When you've chosen your strategy, you still have to make it work. No peg. It's much easier to dream of something and uh, draw it or put it on paper uh, than it is to actually make it. If I had to do over, I'd build an arm. Wishful thinking is the worst enemy of a good designer. Oh, yeah! It's so slow! <laughs> the competition is just six weeks after the students first get their bags of parts. The rumors are flying. Which students are the hot competitors? There's supposedly one guy who was out working and then came back to MIT. He claims to be able to do it in 856 milliseconds or some amazing figure like that. Yeah, I heard about that. Kevin Smith, I think it's the guy's name. I'm glad in that the person that I drew to run against has a good machine. And, it, and it's not somebody that's got something that I'll just like demolish him. Remember, Kevin's machine is the fast barrier. Round one. Somebody's got to beat him because he's bragging too much. <laughs> Kevin wins. Six more rounds to the finals. Any strategy for the next round? Same as before. Go fast. 
John Tenney with a slower barrier machine. In round one, up against Bob Gustafson's deadly projectile. Projectile wins. Working exactly as planned, knocking John Tenney's yellow peg off the end of the table. The machines come up to the tables in endless variety. meticulously prepared machine works flawlessly through a couple of easy rounds against little competition. But also moving up easily is Bob Gustafson's projectile machine. How do you feel? You're up against the guy with the projectile. Oh, I am? I didn't know that until just now. Well, I hope I do good. I hope I can cover the peg before he hits me. What's the secret of your success so far? Keeping it simple, at least the projectile. I think the projectile has made it, otherwise I would have never made it through any rounds. Are you glad you beat Kevin? Yes. <laughs> I think the, uh, it's, it keeps people humble. <laughs> Is Bob's projectile on the left a champion? One, zero. This round, he's beaten by an arm that's so fast and strong, the projectile itself is knocked aside. The arm was built by Greg Kochansky on the left. Mike Drumhiller's machine was also moving up well. Like Kochansky, he had gone for the basic swinging arm approach with a superbly fast, accurate action. crowd, Mike breezed through five rounds. But then, he comes up against the Red Barrier. Did you think you'd get this far? Well, I kind of knew that when I got up against someone with a barrier, I'd have a hard time. The barriers are faster in this game. I wish I'd built one. Also moving up was a strange combined barrier and projectile. Semi-finals, it's a battle of strategies. The red barrier against Kochansky's high-speed arm. Two, one, go. And Kochansky is fast, but he's also lucky. There's a malfunction in the red machine. The barrier worked, but the peg scooper jammed. Kochansky won, but only just. So in the finals, it's pure speed at this end versus muscle, the projectile barrier at the far end. Three, two, one, go. And it's speed that counts. The projectile is too late on the scene to block Kochansky's incredible speed. Are you proud to have won? Oh yeah. The you know, competition is very tough, and the ideas over here were, were really incredible. I was I was in fear for my uh, machine a few times there. I don't feel bad about about losing. Mine worked the way I wanted it to, and and 
Do you expect to get this far? No, I didn't even expect to get this far. As long as I, I figured as long as I won one, I'd be happy. How did you think the contest went? I think it was very successful. As usual, we had a great group of students. They had the proper spirit. They did real well. What did the students learn from it? We hope they learned a lot about Mother Nature applying all of her rules all of the time. If anything possibly can go wrong, it will. 